Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Ashante, and on Mondays, I review Insecure. If you want to know what I think about this recent episode of Insecure, stay tuned. Okay, so this episode starts off with Issa finally getting her ass in a mirror, doing her little mirror wrap, and then it's interrupted by Daniel. And I believe, and I think we see Daniel for the last time, at least, I don't know, probably, I don't know. I kind of feel like we're not gonna see Daniel again. As Daniel's leaving, Molly's coming in and Molly does, you know, the whole, when your friends don't like each other, the whole polite, oh, hi, okay, well, bye. So we see Molly and Daniel kind of cross paths. And then Molly is now going through Issa's stuff and she's pulling out all of her old CDs, a birthday card she got like a couple of years ago. And Molly tells her to just throw it all away. She's like, you can't bring your old shit into your new life, which is totally true. I do this after like, you get rid of friends or you purge your friends or you know after you break up with somebody that you might've been hanging out with for a little bit and you just kind of throw everything away. So Molly's trying to get Issa to throw away her Adele CDs, the birthday card, some faux 50 shade of gray but black edition. Um, and then Molly brings her a bottle of Hennessy to start off her liquor cabinet. We go to Molly's new law firm and they're having a morning meeting and, and Molly's trying to jump in, trying to prove that she deserves to be there. Torian interrupts and he just kind of does what he interrupts and mansplains everything that she was going to say. Molly asked those two women like out of reassurance like is this on me like am I the one tripping or is it him? She said that they didn't teach them each tact at Morehouse which was pretty funny because my dad went to Morehouse. So then we see Issa singing to her taco and you know when you get some food after like a really long break or you've been thinking about this item of food for a really long time and then you get that item of food in your hand and it either falls or it, something happens to it so the hot guy from the party lift whose name is Nathan is now at Worldwide Tacos because Issa told him that it was a good place to get tacos so he sees her there and she drops her taco and he's like okay sorry about your taco and then he long story short he ends up ordering tacos for her for the two of them and it's gonna be an hour wait I've never in my yes I have wait so he's like you know dang an hour man um, and then he starts talking about how people in LA are flaky which people in LA are totally flaky I didn't start flaking on people until I moved to LA because I just thought it was like the culture during that hour wait see a is supposed to pick up some guy I guess that's her lifting that he's gonna be at the airport so she totally flakes on him and then she takes Nathan on a tour of her city which I think is super cool that somebody who can be like okay well let me take you around because if anybody my sister came to visit me from Georgia and I felt so bad because I took her to the Hollywood Walk of Fame and Runyon Canyon because that's all my ass so if somebody were to ask me like what do I do for fun it would be do I do for fun? Taking my dog for a walk and eating Postmates because I don't do anything. I don't go anywhere. <laughs> you see Molly talking to her therapist. Molly just feels as if she needs to have already just be in the mix. Molly feels like because Molly thinks so highly of herself, she feels as if she already needs to be their go-to person. And I think she's struggling to actually have to prove her worth to people and have to prove why she is who she is. And the fact that nobody in her office is, is like bowing down to her or nobody in her office is, um, is impressed by her yet because she hasn't proven herself. I feel like Molly's fear, she has a fear of commitment almost. She even said she doesn't want to get comfortable in a bad situation and that's me with everything that I own. Like that's totally me in relationship form and I'd rather be single than be in a bad situation and I feel like Molly having had dealt with Dro who she accidentally brought up to to her therapist um, having dealt with him and just knowing that he wasn't 
available and he wasn't anything that she wanted. He was just convenient. I think Molly doesn't want to fall into a convenience factor when it comes to how she makes her money. Go back to Issa and Nathan and he wants to go to the jungle which is from training day and it was perceived as like this really wretched ghetto and how and just dangerous and and with when he went with Issa, Issa showed him that it was just a dead end street. You know, it was just a street that had houses that had apartment complex on it. And he even said, he was like, your hood is nice. The hood in Houston. What I like about this show is it shows black people just living their black lives without the influence of of Hollywood, like white Hollywood. Walking down the street playing Truth or Dare and he asked her about her previous relationship and then she told him that she cheated, which I think anybody, I think, I don't know, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't know, guys. So he finds out that she grew up up the street, actually up the hill. And so they go to her old house, he finds out they have a pool, they go into the back and then they play skinny dipping Truth or Dare. She tells him how she has a rap journal and she used to rap and she wants to do something with music, to do something with that. And he's like, sometimes you need to shake shit up. And that's totally true. You should shake shit up, especially if you feel like you're not going anywhere. And I think Issa and Molly both are having this, this crisis at work. Molly, it, Molly's crisis is she hasn't been there long enough to prove herself. And she feel, I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is just my interpretation of what I think is going on, but I feel like Molly has to prove herself in a situation where she's never had to prove herself anyways because she, I feel like she's always been the token and she's always had the pressure to prove herself and to prove people wrong, but since she just fits in here and there's nothing really that special about Molly and her job situation, she has to struggle to prove that she belongs there. I don't know if that makes sense, but Issa has to prove that that she too belongs at her job but her job is just so unfulfilling that it doesn't matter you know she is at a place that they don't even respect her they don't even like her you know and um and so I feel like when she was having this conversation about her job and about how she had a rap journal mentally she already had one foot out of the door um, at her at her job then we see Molly and this tight little blue dress with a gold zipper at the back. And she's talking to the two women on her firm about, I don't know, the two women approach her about um, the job that Molly, what is that word called? Volunteered for. So the two women approach her about the job that Molly volunteered for. And they're telling her that tonight they're doing X, Y, and Z, and if she had time, and Molly's like, oh, um, Mm, it's funny because Molly had just said like the day before that, you know, she she was absolutely she wanted to work, she wanted to help out any way she can. And now there she's like, Oh, tonight, um it's just that I and Torrance opens the door and he's like, Hey Molly, you ready? And those two women were like, Okay. And so now I feel like Molly is now going to have to prove herself to those two women because you know women can be fucking catty and who knows maybe they wrote them not to be catty um but it's a tv show uh so we'll see but molly now i feel like is in the shits with those two women who i feel like were the only two women um that she spoke to really i don't know what the hell molly's doing because I don't know and but I guess you know being new you kind of have to figure out your own shit and you have to figure out um, who your friends are and this is all part of finding out who your friends are at your new job yeah so in conclusion um, I think seeing I think um, seeing Issa in her new job with the apartment complex and hopefully seeing if she gets a job with the beat crew um, and where she goes with Nathan. I think this is all something that is so freaking cool. And seeing if, if Daniel ever comes back, which honestly, I hope he doesn't come back. Not because I wish him any ill will, but I mean, 
Issa threw away that box of just junk and hopefully I think we're gonna see Issa moving up in life and not making you know, I think we're gonna see Issa come and, like, kind of be an adult about things and not make stupid decisions. And um, hopefully with Nathan, things go right. And I can't wait to see the dynamics between Molly and the people that she works with. That's new. All right, you guys, so that is what I think about episode four of season three of Insecure. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like this new dynamic with Nathan? Do you like where this might go? What do you think about how Molly is going to be treated by her new co-workers? If she's going to be treated poorly? Um, what do you think? Yeah, let me know. Okay, you guys, I will see you guys next week.